This is a sous vide cooker that I made seven years ago, before sous vide became the craze. It's time for me to upgrade this thermistor or thermocouple. It's been years. I use this thing multiple times a week and the thermocouples always get rusty. So I'm going to show you what the inside of this one looks like and maybe prompt you to think about making one for yourself. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a pretty, pretty straightforward setup here. It's really just a slow cooker. So we got the slow cooker. You have this, which is basically a thermometer. The system is very simple. So you get power coming in from the wall and then it goes into this PID controller. So it's a very simple PID controller. And the PID controller is controlled by this thermocouple, which goes in the slow cooker. And the PID controller turns this outlet on and off. So turning the outlet on and off maintains a certain temperature. A relatively simple system. The reason I went with a PID controller like this is because it was like $10 and I could do it myself. I could get an Arduino going and code it all up, but the non-recurring engineering time just really wasn't worth it for me. So $10, all right, let's do it. The enclosure is from a local electronics store. Nothing fancy. I actually have several newer versions of this that I 3D print enclosures for. So I make my own 3D printed enclosures and I typically give those to friends or if I have multiple setups going because I literally do have multiple setups going. If I'm gonna have a party, I could have three or four sous vide things going with ribs or chicken or really whatever you want. So sous vide is pretty great with that. So we're gonna be integrating this flash new thermocouple here. Very straightforward. Should be pretty easy. Let's see what I left for myself seven years ago inside of this thing. Because I, I haven't opened it in years. Now don't, don't pay me out because I actually think I built this entire thing upside down. I think these are supposed to be feet on the bottom of it. I think these are supposed to be little rubber grommets for the bottom, but don't tell anybody. Okay, let's see. This is probably gonna be very embarrassing, so. I don't know about this. All right, let's get stuck in. Doesn't, doesn't seem good. Okay. No, this could be worse. Mm, I didn't do a too bad a job with this. I don't know why this, uh, I'm not exactly sure why the relay is not attached to anything. It was probably hot glued down. Mm, doesn't smell too bad. Doesn't smell like I let too much of the blue smoke out. Now, how the hell am I gonna get at the back of this thing? This is going to be fun. I'm not exactly sure how I figured out how to get this out, but it's half out now. So here we go. We got this guy half out. This is soldered in, so I don't really feel like pulling these. They're, they seem to still be attached to this. So you can kind of see what I was saying earlier. Let's make sure we can see this here. So you got power coming in. You got a solid state relay. The PID controller. You got this. A little bit of something here to keep it so it doesn't pull too hard. So the thermocouple is obviously super rusty, so that's what we're replacing today. So we're going to replace this thermocouple with a brand spanking new one, and hopefully it keeps it from having the erratic behavior I've been seeing the last few weeks where I think it's actually been heating up much more than it should. All right, so let's get this pulled a little bit away from here. All I really need to do is pull this far enough forward here. The reason that I decided to make my own sous vide controller, so when I made this seven years ago, Anova wasn't a thing, all those big sous vide brands, all the big sous vide brands didn't exist at that point. And the thing that I really like about this is that I use really inexpensive slow cookers, so like $20 slow cookers, because it needs to be stupid. 
because you're turning the outlet on and off, so it has to have no buttons, basically just a big resistor. And this is perfect because this is the first $10 I've had to inject into this system in seven years. I'm on my second or third slow cooker, which is not a big deal because they're $20, and I sous vide two or three times a week on average, and I do that ad nauseum. So that was quite a bit of annoyance there, but we got all these terminals resecured. Happy days there. Cinch it up. You know, this floating doesn't really bother me too much. So this, this all state relay here, he's floating a bit. He's fine. Let's see, the rest of these are nice and tight. All right. Let's see. Let's put two of these on. This power outlet, it's not American. Yeah, it's crazy. This is an Aussie. This is my Aussie Mark I, the first one I made here in Australia for myself. Two twenty is a little scarier than one twenty. I'm not gonna lie. I've gotten hit by it a couple times, and I'm just gonna cover this before I do the smoke test and make sure I didn't ruin anything. So I got a hot power cable now. happens to this guy. Okay. 18. This is in Celsius. This is not in freedom units for uh, you imperial scum that are watching. There you go. So 62 Celsius is the temperature that it is shooting for. This is the current temperature that the thermocouple sees. So it's been wired appropriately. And if we checked, this little output light is on. So this little output light indicates that the outlet is on. Obviously, if it's switched on. So there you have it. It's ready to go again. Let's head downstairs and I'll show you exactly what it looks like in situ. All right, so here's the setup in situ. I got a couple pieces of steak here that I want to cook in the sous vide today. The slow cooker looks a bit gross, but since I vacuum packed the food, I don't really care how gross the water is that it sits in. And the way that this works is, as you might expect, what we're gonna do is we just chuck the food in, and put this to make sure the lid stays on nice. Shiny new thermocouple here. We set this in the water. Try to figure out a spot that it sits nice. Right, perfect. Okay, so you can see why this thing gets rusty, because this is how I use it. I probably should 3D print something to hold it up, but I just came up with that literally right now as I'm talking, so maybe next video I'll talk about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on. Might be a bit hard to read, but it's at 62 Celsius, which is too hot for this steak. So I'm just going to go switch this to 52. And you can see this light turns on, the light will turn on, and you'll notice the slow cooker light will turn on as well. So that's how it's going to work. Slow cooker light is turning on, it might be a bit hard to see with this video. The thing with the slow cooker here is that you can't overcook things because the steak is all the same temperature as the water. No overcooking things here. And I'll show you what this looks like afterwards, it looks gorgeous. Perfect edge to edge. Very thin piece, so you can't really tell, but it's perfect edge to edge. And you can't do this another way. This is actually how fancy steakhouses cook their food. If you want to know more about my sous vide setup, you should check out the link in the description below and join my Discord. I'm happy to give you all the schematics and everything that I did in this video, and we'll see you at the next one.